So we're back in the UK now and the motorhome has also followed us. So this video is talking you through shipping a motorhome from Baltimore in the USA to Liverpool in the UK. Did everything go to plan? Let's find out. So in order to prepare the van for shipping, there are a couple of things you've got to think about. First off is the fuel. Now, the shipping company only allow a quarter of a tank of diesel as a maximum or gas, depending on what it is. There is to be no grey water, no fresh water. All gas bottles must be completely empty. Now, some shipping companies will ask you for a certificate to, to state that it's empty. So that's another thing you've got to think about. And obviously, in terms of us, we've got to empty the, uh, the black waste and the cassette, all of which I've done uh, over the last couple of days. So the, pretty much the premise of packing the van is if it looks empty, then that's what they want in terms of the shipping company. As you can see here, there's not a lot in it. Yes, there are stuff in the cupboards, but if you're looking through the window, it looks empty with nothing in it. And you can see here, again, the bathroom is all completely empty, as is the kitchen. And swinging all the way around to the front, and the dashboard is completely empty of any electronic gadgets. Um, uh, and they tell you that, do not take any electronics or leave any electronics in the van. So all your sat-navs and your dash cams, etc., uh, go with us on the plane. Now, one of the other things that the shipping company suggests you do is to cover your upholstery and any beds with a plastic sheeting, which you can see I've done here. Now, there are two reasons for that. Firstly, uh, a ship and a port are very dusty places, so you want to protect it from that. But secondly, and probably most importantly, uh, sometimes the ship's crew like to use your RV as a bit of a, um, a resting place, shall we say, whilst they're on duty. Always best to be prepared. So here we are on Broning Highway and actually the Sea Bridge offices, or in this case they're called Prime, are at 2200 um, Broning Highway, so uh, only about a mile away. You can see there the port in the distance and that's where we're heading. It's actually really light traffic considering the time of the day, it's just before 8 o'clock. Um, and we're sort of turned into the port area now so you can actually tell a big difference. Uh, the last half a mile in the, in the city centre almost was, uh, was very chock -a Pride International are what they call the forwarding company for Seabridge, who are the shipping company that we've got with. And they're based here on Broning Avenue. I'm just going in there now. What I'll do is I'll park up. Um, I'm going to wait till 9 o'clock. It's 8.30 now. And at 9 o'clock, uh, the laborious paperwork starts. So I'll see you guys in a bit. So here we are now, I've just been into the shipping office, got all the paperwork done, which was which was fairly painless, um, and I'm now following the escort, which is that guy in front there, who's with American Shipping Services, and he's going to take me to the customs at the port. so they can just vouch for us and hopefully getting through the customs etc will, uh, will be a quick and easy process.
So here we are at the port. The van is now in its line uh, with a couple of others behind us. That one there from Belgium. And we're just now waiting for the guy to come and inspect it. And what they do is they just take measurements to make sure it's still the same vehicle that's on all the dockets and information. And then they're good to go. They give you a license back and everything else that you've given them in the customs office. And uh, here we are, everything's ready to go. So Van, I will see you on the other side of the pond. Good morning, folks. Well, it's Tuesday the 19th of December and I'm on my way to the port of Liverpool to pick up the van. Hopefully um, everything will be all right following the crossing. She's eventually arrived um, after a delay in Baltimore about a week. Uh, so hopefully everything will be fine. Um, as you can see outside, it's, uh, it's not a particularly great day. It's very rainy um, and the usual traffic that you come to expect in the UK that uh, I really didn't miss when we are in the States. Um, clearly I'm not driving. In fact, my dad is taking me to the port this morning. Say hi, Dad. <laughs> hi. Okay, everybody. <laughs> and, uh, and the port opens at 8 o'clock, so hopefully we'll be there um, shortly afterwards. Got a long journey today, so um, about 250 miles to where the van's going to be um, getting serviced and fixed and MOT'd for the next year. So hopefully the, the mechanical issues that we experienced before we put her on the ship in Baltimore um, don't reappear, so uh, fingers crossed. Uh, but I'll get back to you once we get closer to the port of Liverpool. So you can see the docks in the distance there. Now, this bit of the journey should be really simple um, in, terms of, in terms of picking up the van because the van has cleared customs. The forwarder phoned me the other day to, to, to let me know that the van has now cleared customs and it's just really um, picking up. So when you go to pick up the van in Liverpool, you're literally just turning up to the front gate. You're giving him your ID um, to prove who you are, obviously, and then you jump on a bus by all accounts and that takes you to the customs release area where you basically take your bill of lading that you got in Baltimore, give it to the, the, the sort of the clerk in the office there and she or he will then give you the keys and a slip that allows you to leave the port and then you're on your way. So it's really very simple in terms of picking up the van um, when it arrives into the UK. So once you get to the port, you basically just book in to, uh, to the left hand lane on the entrance into the port and give them your ID, tell them what you're here for and they send you to this little bus stop um, which is just here on the outside of the port and they send a little minibus for come and collect you and then once you're in there they take you around to the customs release area where you're given the paperwork, show your ID and they should hopefully just give you the keys to the van um, and then they let you go and get it and you can drive it out and you're then on your own for uh, for getting out of the port and to go onwards to wherever you want to go. So let's hope it's as easy in reality as it seems uh, to be in theory. So a bit of a rigmarole trying to get into the port because um, our forwarder couldn't make it today but he gave me instructions but those instructions were just ignored by everybody else. So, uh, so I've been hanging around a bit but th thankfully somebody's now coming to pick me up to take me to the heavy lift area which is where the van is. Um, I can't video in the port from this point onwards, but uh, hopefully once I've got the van and I'm out of the port again, uh, then I'll stop and uh, we'll have a look around the van and see how it's doing. Aha, uh -huh, right, well, here she is. Before I actually get in and drive, I'm going to just have a walk around, make sure there's no, no huge damage. Uh, I know there's a few scratches on the back end because I did them in Washington, but uh, but looks all right. Oh, it's fantastic to see you, old girl. Oh, I tell you, we've really missed this van it's it's surprising how you get used to something uh, and we we have genuinely missed being in it it's felt really weird to be in big houses but she looks great um, right I'm just cut this video short because I'm not really supposed to be doing it but uh, I suppose for record purposes certainly for damage etc I'm gonna take the video looks like everything's still in um, obviously the plastic the plastic that we put on the sheeting is uh, it's still intact, so that's good. And inside looks fine, nothing looks to be uh, missing anyway. So as you can see, we're very happy to have the van back. 
Everything went fine, but let's take a look at the breakdown of the costs. Now the shipping cost does $4,752. The forwarder and port charges cost us $275. The escort cost us $75. And the marine insurance cost us $326. This is at an exchange rate of 125 to the pound. So the total cost therefore in dollars and pounds is $5,440 or 4,352 pounds. And don't forget, this is one way only. Thanks for watching, I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below and we will try and answer all those questions. If you've had similar experiences, then put those experiences in the comments as well so that everybody else can share those experiences with you. Now, we're off to Europe next, so hopefully you'll want to tag along with us. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell and we'll see you in the new year.